Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I suggest that we start. Uh, we are uh, a bit late. Everybody seems to be uh, late by 10 minutes. Uh, today we have a uh, pitch session uh, for innovation clusters. All those clusters are a part of the a uh, priority development uh, project of the uh, Ministry of Economic Development. We would like to introduce to you uh, the uh, clusters. Uh, we would like uh, to raise the awareness amongst the international community. We are going to have short presentations uh, from representatives of different regions and clusters. They will talk about uh, their benefits, uh, what they have to offer. They will talk about their experience. And um, now I would like to uh, pass the floor uh, to uh, uh, Oleg Famichov, uh, Deputy Minister of Economic Development of Russian Federation. Um, thank you for the introduction. This is the third day of the forum. Uh, those of you who have been uh, here for three days in a row must be a bit tired. Uh, we should concentrate, though, this is a very important subject. We have been dealing with this for a number of years, and uh, we uh, have um, done uh, quite a lot. Uh, we have uh, covered a few phases in development uh, of uh, innovation clusters. Uh, this was more than just another project. Uh, this was a big movement. We wanted to find uh, things uh, that uh, uh, were attractive, interesting um, in the country. Uh, we did not have so many uh, things to start with. Uh, after eight years, we have arrived uh, to the uh, current uh, situation, which uh, makes us uh, quite happy, uh, although not all regions are very happy because they are not getting all the money that uh, they have expected. But it's not only about the money. We uh, give them a lot of opportunities. We have uh, set up a good uh, structure. Now, this is all uh, a, a big project. The clusters have also uh, seen a lot of changes over the years. There have initially been about 30 clusters uh, in the first phase. Uh, we uh, ended up with uh, 12 uh, full-fledged uh, clusters. Uh, we uh, can compare uh, those uh, to uh, some international uh, centers. Uh, the clusters that uh, we see in the United States are no stronger than uh, what we have to show in uh, our country. Um, I want to say a big thank you to the regional teams. Uh, they have uh, made very serious investment. Uh, in these uh, projects in each cluster, they have uh, put together a strategy. Then last year, they have uh, prepared a roadmap. We have uh, done several strategic uh, sessions. We have uh, had uh, interesting discussions, and uh, we very much appreciate the work done by the consultants, uh, many of them. Uh, worked for free. We did not have the budget uh, to pay for their services. We also appreciate uh, the efforts um, of the development organizations. As of today, we have a well uh, structured uh, set up. We have clear understanding of what has to be done. We uh, can say that. Uh, all clusters are unique in their own way. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation. Uh, we uh, think that this is a good thing. We uh, have seen some very high-quality jobs done uh, by companies, by R&D organizations. We uh, have had contributions uh, made by uh, large uh, corporations and uh, smaller organizations. We now understand what uh, each cluster wants to achieve. The goals that they set for themselves uh, were quite ambitious. Today, uh, we uh, like uh, what we see. And uh, we 
are going to uh, try um, a number of new uh, tools. We uh, will uh, discuss them in the next uh, session. Uh, we uh, will uh, look at the best practices uh, that have been developed uh, by regional and uh, national champions. We uh, will have a number of incentives uh, for those who participate in this work. Uh, the uh, regional authorities uh, make very good contribution to this work. We also uh, do our best uh, to uh, promote those clusters uh, internationally. We are going to uh, continue this work. We are going to have more strategic sessions to uh, develop uh, these uh, clusters. We will be uh, raising the knowledge level of the people involved in this work. So we uh, hope that in the broad context of the uh, government agenda, we will be able uh, to raise uh, the bar even higher. And um, we hope that uh, clusters uh, would uh, become really uh, successful and uh, they uh, will remain one of the priorities uh, in the economic policy. It is a priority today, and uh, we hope that it will continue uh, to be that. Um, we are uh, very interested in this session. Uh, we have been looking forward to the presentations uh, from regions. We want to see uh, the picture uh, from uh, different angles. We understand that regions are trying to draw a pretty picture, maybe a bit more uh, pretty uh, than uh, what it really is. Uh, we um, have been looking into everything um, in depth at our strategic sessions, and uh, today we have an excellent opportunity to have an open conversation about some uh, shortfalls that we still may have. Uh, we can discuss things uh, where we have not been successful. We can talk about problems at the regional level uh, and uh, try to identify solutions. This brings me to the end of my introductory remarks. And uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to the regional presentations. Uh, we're here to uh, tell international investors about the business opportunities uh, at uh, innovation clusters. So uh, we want to do it this way. Before we pass the floor to the regions for their short pitches, we asked uh, two representatives of international companies to make short presentations. Uh, they will uh, tell us about the uh, criteria which they are using uh, when uh, they are looking for uh, potential investment sites. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, pass the floor to the first presenter. Uh, good morning and uh, uh, thank you. I'm Lawrence Whitmer. I am a head of a Swiss uh, business organization. Uh, we uh, support Swiss companies uh, that have business in Russia, and we also offer a help, uh, helping hand uh, to those Russian businesses uh, that are looking to do business in Switzerland. I can tell you quickly uh, what uh, I hear uh, when I uh, speak uh, to representatives of uh, a Swiss business in Russia. First of all, uh, people are talking about uh, human potential. People are looking uh, for high quality human resources, people with education and good skill sets. Uh, that is the key priority. 
Secondly, uh, there are uh, some uh, industry-specific things. I don't want to go into the details uh, on this, though. And thirdly, another important point is the uh, special terms um, of doing business offered uh, by the government. I'm talking about taxes. I'm talking about uh, special benefits, which uh, may or may not be available. And it's uh, all essentially about easy access. Uh, that is the uh, simplest way uh, to uh, put it. Ease of doing business, ease of solving problems. In conclusion of my short remarks, I uh, want to say that uh, Swiss companies may be uh, different uh, from others because they uh, usually have uh, long-term interests. That is an important factor. A uh, few Swiss companies come here for three or five years. Uh, most Swiss businesses are interested in long-term opportunities. Uh, in the context uh, of uh, benefits, if they are offered only at the initial phase, that is not so important. That is not as important as the uh, level of reliability. Uh, of local business. Uh, Swiss business people are looking uh, for conditions uh, that will always be here in many years to come. So those are the main priorities for Swiss companies. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, we uh, will have opportunities uh, to ask questions, and uh, we will uh, give uh, the floor uh, to representatives of international businesses later on. So let's uh, uh, not uh, open Q&A now. Now I would like to uh, pass the floor to Mikhail Akim, uh, who is the vice president of ABB Russia. He's uh, also a head of working groups on modernization and innovations uh, in a consultative council on foreign investment. Uh, let's uh, hear from the representative of ABB. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me over, and um, I thank you for the job you're doing. In recent years, the situation uh, has uh, seen a very serious improvement. A few years back, we have been uh, looking uh, for a site. The clicker is not working. Uh, we have been looking for a site for a new plant. Um, selection of a uh, site uh, turned out to be an easy job. At that time, there were several economic zones that uh, were already in place. Uh, some of them were uh, doing well. Some of them have not been uh, so successful. We looked at uh, what our peers were doing, and uh, we uh, had a fairly good understanding of uh, what our options were. We looked at traditional parameters, level of regional support uh, from local government, and a few other things. So we selected uh, a new site, and we were very pleased, very happy. We built a plant over one year. We launched production, and uh, that became possible uh, due to the uh, conditions in that special economic zone and the support that we were getting from the governor and other local authorities. Six months ago, uh, we had another uh, interesting task. Uh, I will quickly tell you about our business so that you understand uh, that task better. A lot uh, 
of people talk about digital economy these days. Uh, we have been a part of digital economy uh, for many years. We have been a supplier of uh, various automatic devices for many decades. Uh, so digital solutions uh, have um, originated uh, in automation technologies. Uh, we see uh, an explosive growth uh, of digital technologies today. Uh, most of them have been based on B2B solutions. Today, communication uh, technologies are cheaper, uh, storage is cheaper, uh, computing is cheaper, and that uh, raised the level of competition in the market. Uh, that is very important, the level of competition in a market. Uh, we offer our services to uh, various industries on a world scale. I stress this uh, because this is important. Uh, we have clients all over the world. In the past, uh, we had individual units uh, for each one of these industries. Uh, today, uh, those units become bigger. In a highly competitive market, uh, we have to have bigger business units. And uh, we now have uh, much bigger engineering centers. We have changed uh, the way they're organized. Uh, today, we have two uh, global scale engineering uh, centers uh, that uh, deal uh, with various solutions. One is in Czech Republic and the other is in India. Our uh, task was to convince uh, our uh, top management uh, that Russia was a perfect place uh, for another engineering center that would offer its services uh, to uh, the entire world. To be competitive, we have to give services to the entire world. We cannot have an individual uh, engineering center for one country. It won't be competitive. So based on our experience uh, worldwide, uh, we know uh, that uh, those two global engineering centers uh, could be very effective and efficient, and they also helped us to achieve great savings. So if we uh, are to build another such center in Russia, uh, we have to be very good when we uh, tell our top management uh, that Russia uh, has the knowledge and the expertise uh, to serve global projects. That means that we should be ready uh, to take uh, tremendous risks. Some projects uh, are very big. We're talking about uh, tens of thousands of man hours. Uh, so uh, time, logistics, the quality of human resources, various mechanisms and systems uh, that uh, should be in place uh, play a key role. Now, uh, we uh, are starting this project based on our understanding of where uh, we could uh, have uh, a good location. Uh, we. Uh, Initially, I uh, did not want to go to Moscow or St. Petersburg. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, prices are too high and not acceptable to us. We wanted to get uh, quality and quantity factors. Uh, we have uh, looked at 18 cities. Uh, we looked at all options. Uh, we have uh, collected information on all those uh, geographies. We uh, have hired consultants. And then again, uh, the consultants that we hired uh, were needed uh, for a reason. Uh, we had our own resources, but we also wanted to have a third opinion. Uh, I uh, was involved uh, in this on the Russian side. Uh, we also had several global experts. We tried to do our best uh, and come up with a really objective solution. Uh, we have uh, ended up with a short list of 18 cities. 
uh, then uh, we uh, did away with some options and uh, eventually at some point in time uh, we uh, had a list of 10 cities. At that time uh, we made trips uh, to all those locations to see uh, whether what we see on paper matches the reality. We wanted to see where we could set up our offices. We uh, wanted to have a better idea of the uh, quality of human resources. We wanted to talk uh, to the management of local universities. Uh, we uh, made in-depth analysis of the local uh, human resources experts. Uh, we were looking uh, for specific kinds of knowledge. We uh, can find plenty of programmers, uh, computer engineers, uh, pretty much everywhere. Uh, but uh, we also needed electrical engineers uh, who would have good command of English. That was a key priority for us. And uh, uh, that, by the way, is something that I wanted to bring to the attention of the ministry and of the regions. Uh, we have to improve uh, the quality uh, of uh, language uh, studies in the country. Uh, that is uh, one serious uh, challenge. We also looked at the uh, cost of labor in different parts of the country. We looked at taxes. We looked at uh, the real estate uh, prices. Uh, logistics costs. Uh, we uh, would look at the center uh, and we uh, assumed uh, that uh, people from that center would need to travel all over the world. So people would need to have quick access to an airport and uh, our time and travel uh, to most international hubs uh, should not be uh, too long. Uh, it is also very important uh, to uh, have a good support from the regional government. We all read the press, and our management in Zurich uh, also reads the press, and uh, uh, people know uh, what happens in different parts of the world uh, if there is a high level of crime uh, in a region, that region uh, would be uh, struck from the list. Nobody is looking for trouble. When we compare one region, uh, region A, uh, to uh, some uh, other region, let's say in Europe, uh, there will be many things uh, that we would look at. Uh, much depends on the local government. Much depends uh, on the governor of a region. So we were looking for a strong governor, someone we could trust. Uh, we also looked at universities. We need a constant uh, inflow of human resources. We uh, cannot continue to develop our uh, engineering center in Czech Republic. Uh, because we have uh, taken pretty much uh, all the engineers. Uh, we have used up all the uh, professional resources there. Uh, we also have some uh, business ethics uh, rules. Uh, we uh, know about uh, lawsuits in different parts of the world. We uh, do not want uh, to uh, be penalized uh, on that matter. So uh, when we looked at uh, taxes, we uh, looked at uh, uh, social insurance uh, payments. Uh, there are very big differences between different regions. There are several uh, alternative uh, mechanisms. There are uh, so-called uh, special economic zones, and there are territories of advanced development. Uh, there are uh, different uh, types of arrangements. We talked to consultants. We looked into the situation ourselves, and we wanted to have a very clear understanding of uh, what is happening. Uh, some things were not clear uh, for us. Uh, uh, that uh, was uh, key for our decision making because that uh, has a strong impact uh, on our costs. Um, this is my last uh, chart that I want to offer to your attention. We have developed uh, a matrix. We calculated uh, all key uh, cost parameters. And based on that, we were able uh, to calculate uh, how much it would cost us uh, to uh, put together an engineering center uh, per uh, employee. We realized 
that uh, uh, we will never go to Moscow and St. Petersburg. Uh, in the regions that uh, we uh, studied, uh, we uh, have seen very serious variations uh, by a factor of two. We looked at wage levels, we uh, looked at social taxes, we looked at real estate uh, costs. Uh, oh, one more point. Uh, there are some clusters that are very nice. Uh, those advanced development uh, territories uh, uh, look very attractive. There are very few places, though, uh, where uh, there are acceptable uh, office centers or uh, technology uh, parks uh, that uh, have uh, all the benefits. Uh, we looked at a couple of regions uh, where they have benefits, but they don't have appropriate real uh, estate. Uh, if uh, we look at other places, we uh, see that they have uh, good uh, venues, but uh, they do not uh, have tax benefits. Uh, based on a thorough analysis of all the cities, uh, we have uh, come to this matrix. We have uh, uh, looked at uh, all the advantages and disadvantages, and we uh, made a short list of three candidate locations. So the bottom line is, uh, once again, uh, I must uh, say that we appreciate what uh, is being done. Uh, we have received a lot of help uh, from the ministry. Uh, we have received very good guidance. Uh, this uh, has been uh, very useful to us. I represent uh, my business, and I think that uh, such uh, support, uh, such help should be given to other companies as well. Uh, many people are missing that. Uh, many people would be looking to uh, open their production or open innovation centers, open a production facilities here. But that uh, is very complex business. The uh, level of uh, language skills uh, is very important. Uh, a strong uh, governor in a region also plays a very big role. So those are the things uh, that we consider to be most important. So uh, where did you end up uh, putting your... Uh, Engineering Center. Uh, we are not decided yet. Uh, we still have three candidates. Uh, it's uh, still being decided. It takes uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I do not know. Now this uh, is uh, uh, being decided at the CEO level. Uh, we should not forget about uh, international sanctions against Russia. We. Uh, are uh, examining uh, the uh, disadvantages associated uh, with the sanctions, what we can do, what we cannot do. Uh, this whole thing somewhat slowed down uh, this work. Uh, this is very serious. Um, we are uh, making a final presentation. We've made a final presentation uh, to the top management uh, of ABB. Uh, and uh, that uh, was a 100 charts presentation. Uh, we have given an in-depth uh, picture of each city. And uh, I hope uh, we will uh, have a positive decision on that and open an engineering center. Thank you, Mikhail. Now we have presentations from the regions. Please don't forget about the timing, five to seven minutes max for a presentation. Please cover the following issues in your presentations. Some general information about the development of the cluster, the current status, key advantages of your cluster for uh, foreign investors in high technology, and briefly, maybe um, case studies, histories of success with international partners, a few words about the team developing the cluster, and the plans of regional authorities to support the cluster. Now I'd like to give the floor to Marat Gainudin from Tatarstan, Vice President of the Association of Anakam Cluster. Good morning, dear colleagues. Briefly about the Inakam cluster in on Kama River. 
the uh, Kama cluster is the biggest cluster in the Russian Federation, producing half polymer sterol and synthetic uh, rubber on Russia every uh, a second uh, tire. It's petrochemistry or car building. The mission of the cluster is to develop high technology production facilities uh, and increasing technological potential and improving the quality of life of the population. The advantages of the cluster, first of all, it's uh, advantageous geographical position. There's a Federal Road L7, International Begisheva Airport, uh, railway junctions, and uh, um, ports. Also, we have good production and innovative infrastructure. There is a special economic uh, zone there, Alabuga, it is called. 23 residents there and 56 applicants to uh, operate there. Two priority development areas, the Nabirizhny Chelny city and Nizhny Kamsk uh, city. Uh, also, we're expanding and completing that process of Kama Industrial Park, which is called Mustard, uh, one of the biggest in Europe. Also, IT Park, High Technology Park. And over the past few years, uh, we have had uh, more than 20 <coughs> industrial parks uh, and <coughs> incubators of ideas. Also, high potential in terms of education. We have branches of the federal university and two national research universities. And one of the uh, most important advantages is that anchor uh, companies are located within a radius of 30 kilometers from each other. And the cluster has very well-established logistics chains. As a result, in the past few years, we implemented more than 20 joint projects, like Electrobox, robot technology, and many other projects. Now, strategic documents of the cluster, while well, it's the strategy for the development of the cluster approved in 2016 by the President of the Republic of Tatarstan, it includes four strategic I initiatives and five uh, main uh, directions for the development of the business, cooperation, uh, innovation, and there's a, a, a concept uh, for INACAM Center based on the resolution of the Russian Federation. We thank the Ministry of the Economy for supporting us in that, in approving that document. This document has been submitted uh, for the development of Kamma agglomeration, where the Kamma cluster is located, and includes 79 priority investment and infrastructure projects. The team of the cluster includes executive authorities, various ministries, departments, administration of the six municipal units, and project office. The uh, authorized body for the implementation of cluster body is the Ministry of the Economy uh, of the uh, Republic of Tatarstan. On international cooperation, the Republic of Tatarstan has been a leader in terms of uh, investment appeal among all, all Russian regions. This is supported by um, the fact that many uh, foreign companies open production facilities on the territory of the Republic, in particular on the territory of the cluster. You see the names of these companies on the slide. And there's uh, go go uh, good progress on projects like Kamas and Daimler building. Um, a factory to build uh, cabins for uh, trucks, uh, also engines, uh, localization processors for four solars in Alaboka. They opened about three production facilities, uh, Turkish ones, to uh, build components for uh, those cars, trucks. Also, a lot of attention is being given by us by, for uh, expanding cooperation and production area. For this purpose, last year, we 
uh, launched a national uh, portal uh, to look for and place orders for complex technological pro products. About 30 participants there from 11 countries, Germany, Czechia, South Korea, Turkey, Belarus, and Kazakhstan, and others. This is it. Thank you. And of course, we're always open for cooperation. Thank you, Marat. But we don't uh, have uh, breaks for questions and answers so right now. We go one after another. Uh, Sid, Mr. Sidov from Mordovia, Minister of uh, Industry, Science and New Technology of, of the Republic of Moldova. Uh, can you show the presentation? The innovation cluster of Svetotechnika and the electronic machine building is located on the territory of the Republic more than 10 years. It started from the, that point in time when we decided to build one of the first uh, factories to build uh, bulbs, electric bulbs. And this is a cluster which has more than 46 participants right now, 28 industrial companies innovative infrastructure objects, uh, development institutes, uh, research institutions, and authorities are also present. We see the mission of the clusters promoting uh, social and economic development of the Republic of Moldova through improved competitiveness and attracting new participants in competition. And we call it Bright City and expanding the geographic of presence and um, marketing territories for the cluster. The objective of the cluster and management company of the cluster, including all the associations which are also participants uh, in the cluster, is attracting investment in the um, fixed assets of the participants, increasing exports, and increasing the production of innovative products and goods goods increasing research. Of course, we see our task as supporting the participants in the cluster in joint projects, coordinating those projects, and uh, promoting the development of innovative small and medium-sized companies who would promote new products that can be breakthrough products on world markets. Another objective is developing education and innovative uh, institutions has been said already. Personnel is a very important part of this whole business. Our plans in the development of the cluster have been defined by the strategy which by the order of the head of the Republic of Moldova was approved in 2016. And there are four long-term initiatives within the strategy. The first is Saransk, the uh, center of attracting knowledge, because we believe we have all the conditions in place, including the national research institutions, uh, other t research centers, uh, uh, the institutions of development, to form that um, uh, HR potential that we need for the development of the companies within the cluster and in, in taking part in joint projects with world innovative uh, centers. The second uh, objective is Suransk uh, investment uh, center. Uh, we see uh, the main uh, objectives there as uh, creating uh, joint ventures based on the model that has been already tested uh, and based on the strategy innovation is the main criteria in selecting pilot investment projects in the republic of Mold moldova the other initiative is saransk as a project uh, platform our objective here is while well, considering that uh, the city is being prepared to host uh, the World Cup of 2018, we are one of the uh, host cities. So our project companies and members of the cluster, they should be given an uh, opportunity to uh, uh, market their uh, products, to apply uh, those products within that program that is being uh, implemented uh, very quickly right now. And we hope this is going to be 
be seen by all people who come to the city, and we are not going to stop at that. We are going to continue to make a Saransk project platform for uh, those uh, uh, products that are created by members of the cluster. And four, so, uh, initiative number four is Saransk is a city of sport and healthy lifestyle. Uh, we believe that, uh, that HR potential that we have, especially younger people, we uh, have to keep those uh, using sports as one of the way to attract people to the area through volunteers, etc., etc. And we consider that as a heritage of the World Cup to 2018 because Saransk is in a similar situation like Grenoble after the Olympic Games where a lot of infrastructure was created and a smart use of that infrastructure after the Olympics allowed to, to create very comfortable uh, living environment for uh, the residents and for companies well, offices etc etc transportation logistics all in um, compliance with uh, FIFA st standards. You may have noticed that our project initiatives are all around these long-term uh, objectives of the development of the region. And those projects uh, within the cluster, they uh, will be implemented through the development of the industry, uh, research centers, and it is well, our ultimate objective is improving the lifestyle of the residents of the cluster and the residents of the Republic of uh, Mordovia. This is a long-term objective, but it's clearly defined and it's uh, very well perceived by the population. A uh, very nice approach so that all efforts of the residents of the Republic and um, members of the cluster are focused on implementing these project initiatives. Key advantages of the cluster, first, uh, um, uh, well-established innovation infrastructure, technopark, high technology, uh, very good uh, innovative production uh, facilities, engineering centers in various industries, leaders in those industries, very good IT facility, TR4 in terms of security, which can address any, almost any tasks with a supercomputer in Sarova, fiber optics lines, uh, connecting uh, our center with Sarov, which reduces the time uh, required to do um, heavy computing uh, tasks. We have business incubators and a center supporting exports, which we do together with the Ministry of Economic Development to make sure the projects of the clusters are given priority in terms of exports. Hi. Uh, educational potential with research universities, etc. Republic Lyceum, and as I said, uh, research initiatives, investment attractiveness of the region. We have industrial par parks and our own uh, development corporation. As a result of the development of the cluster, we see the results. The number of organizations within the cluster since 1990 increased 2.5 times. The production aggregate uh, production of uh, members of the cluster increased by 5.5 times, almost 28 billion rubles right now. Initially, it was five. And the productivity per one employee increased by five times because of the programs supporting that and because of joint work with the members of the cluster. Plans for the development further, uh, future development of the cluster are shown here. And the final slide is this. We have case studies, histories of success. This is joint venture with South Korean companies, Timnepis Rus, last year established joint venture in uh, Eastern Africa with an objective of building a plant for uh, uh, electrical lighting equipment for Africa, fiber optic production, and we're in negotiations with um, major producers, international ones for joint production. And together with Western Europe, we established this laboratory, monocrystals of uh, uh, silicon carbide, an exclusive uh, 
a provider of this technology. And um, to investors, we suggest offering projects or which would be integrated in our production facilities, uh, improving the value chains, improving our innovative uh, processes and we would like to have joint projects and we'll be ha happy to have local production of international goods we would welcome that especially if you want to use our infrastructure educational HR uh, potential etc and photonics and uh, fiber optics we're uh, creating an engineering center for fiber optics technology to produce special fiber optics uh, and we see that international partners are interested in participating in this project and we are welcome uh, their participation of course this is simply the address telephones etc I will be happy to answer your question afterwards thank you Alexander we have uh, Vadim Pavlov now, head of, Ulyan, of cluster development in Ulyanovsk region. Good morning, dear colleagues. On behalf of my region, welcome here. Uh, our innovation cluster in Ulyanovsk Oblast is going to be the focus of my presentation. What has been done? What are the plans? What are the objectives? Now, at the mission, can we have the presentation on screen? The concept of the innovative uh, cluster was developed together with our colleagues on the basis of a contest. We were one of the winners and we're very active in, in developing this project right now. Our objective here is transforming the economic model of the development of the region from industrial model or to, uh, oriented to, towards traditional markets to giving more focus on innovative technology. There are many factors supporting this process. We're optimistic about the future right now. We do believe that our project is going to be successful. And the experience uh, that has been uh, accumulated in the region in creating favorable investment climate will be used for the purpose. Uh, we're very good in terms of ratings and uh, the favorability of investment climate. And we have many new companies coming to Lyonsk regions so over the past five years. It's more than 50 companies that came to the region with their production facilities. And you see some of the names here. This is the result of the uh, activity of the institutes of the development, the uh, regional authorities, and the governor of the region uh, uh, supported that, of course. The concept itself of the innovative cluster is uh, 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 um, the creation of ecosystem and combining those elements that are already available in the region. The industrial facilities, industrial parks, and the emphasis of the past years is to uh, attract companies who not only do their production facilities there, but also engineering centers. As a result of this activity, what we have is that several companies, well, like Mars company, opened their research center uh, in uh, food uh, for animals. Then Gamare, uh, shipbuilding company, and another project, all of that includes the research component, not only production. In addition to that, we have a traditional industries in a, a part of the cluster, like a well-known company, in construction companies in particular, uh, which are used, uh, their facilities are being used to do projects. They are involved in cooperation with the cluster and inter-regional cooperation. One of um, 
um, important elements here. A special uh, uh, economic zone, a port zone in Udyanovsk. The main uh, focus of this area is uh, maintenance and repair of ships, creation of uh, um, components, and the first residents are already there in the special economic zone. We have combined the potential of Ulyanovsk and Metrograd. Metrograd is the second biggest city in Ulyanovsk region with nuclear innovative cluster there. It's part of the innovative cluster. And also Metrograd has uh, 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 the first residents are there. There are negotiations with the companies who are interested in coming there. Why Metrograd and Ulyanovsk? They are quite close uh, to each other. It's about 80 kilometers between the two cities. And that scientific and technological potential of um, Technograd and the development territory in Ardanovsk, we uh, plan to combine those and uh, to make uh, a more efficient use of them. This slide shows the concept of the investment cluster. While we have traditional industries there, what we have already in Ulyanovsk region and actively uh, expanding into new sectors, like one example there is the first pilot metro park on the 25th of January. It started generating electricity. The first stage is 35 megawatts. Fortum company uh, built that tetra park in Ulyanovsk. It's in the pilot operation phase yet. And very important, uh, there is also a transfer of technology involved there in Ulyanovsk region, as I said. We have Aviastar construction company, also manufacturing company. They are building Il-82 uh, airplanes. There is a composite uh, a factory producing composite material for aircraft making. So those composites that are do, um, being created for the aviation will be used for uh, the composite materials will be used for uh, the formation of blades for uh, that uh, wind farm. Uh, the electricity I mentioned before is produced by the wind farm, the, this new uh, Fortum uh, wind farm. Uh, and there's a new chair on wind uh, technology in a local university to train personnel for the operation of uh, that wind farm that had not been in, uh, in place in, in Russia. And together with our partner, our investors company, we are doing this educational program. Now, about infrastructure. In the heart of our projects, we have Udyanovsk uh, Technology Center, very important player, nano technology uh, center, one of the best in Russia. They have implemented 100 projects already. There's um, technological specialization, d divided transport of the future, wind uh, and uh, re renewable uh, electricity. There's a project to store energy. There are a whole range of projects that are being done within that uh, particular field. One more minute, please. There's a plan for the in development of the projects. It's being formed right now. There's a team uh, created, uh, Ulyansk region, the governor uh, gives a lot of attention to the project. And it's a priority regional project right now, the development of this innovative uh, clusters. The governor is personally in charge. And the team uh, uh, of that cluster well, in 2017, there was a contest Olymp project called and evaluating uh, the operations of the uh, cluster team, we won in the nomination man project management system in that category, uh, evaluating the management of the project. Uh, we are completing the design of a techno park. The area is more than 30,000 square meters. Uh, this year, we plan to start construction. In 18 months or so, we plan 
to complete the first stage in the construction of the techno park. Also, end of January, the second stage of a nanotechnology center uh, started to be launched. We are already active in negotiations of uh, high technology companies, inviting them to, to participate. In terms of regulations, uh, last year the region uh, approved a law defining the main areas and mechanisms to support high technology uh, companies where the region gives preferences in terms of regional taxes and in terms of providing subsidies for research and development for high technology companies, subsidizing their uh, expenses and paying uh, these uh, payments, uh, creating infrastructure for those companies, all of that is in progress right now. And finally, in October of last year, our project was presented to the President of the Russian Federation. It received the support from the President, and we're now actively engaged with the federal companies, including Web Bank, to uh, have financial support for the project. Thank you. Thank you, Vadim. Next speakers, please try to comply with the time uh, limits. Otherwise, we don't have questions for Q&A. Now we have Alexey Shedrov, Head of Innovative and Production Policy of Lipetsk region. Thank you. Good morning, dear colleagues. First of all, I'd like to thank the Minister of Economic Development for the opportunity to speak today and for over uh, generally for the support they're giving us in our pro process of developing our cluster in Lipetsk region. It's called the Valley of a Machine Building in Lipetsk region. Well, high ratings we have. This is on the slide. I will not speak about this. But today, the ratings of Lipetsk region are supported by those companies which are located in Lipetsk region. It's international companies in a federal uh, special economic zone and regional special economic zones, industrial parks. And what Mr. Akim spoke about today, uh, well, I'll take a describe how ABB selected the site uh, for their uh, facilities in Russian Federation. Well, and this site is in Lipetsk region, in a special economic zone, where the engineering center is going to be. We don't know, but we do hope that you select us. And, but in addition to ABB, there are many other companies who participate. It's 52 residents that we have 19 manufacturing facilities in operation right now. Uh, we average, on average, have 10 big uh, factories opened every year in Lipetsk. And this uh, are factories with uh, world brands like BBG USA. Uh, the United States of America, Schlumberger, a French-American company, Wiesmann uh, from Germany. We have uh, companies from Japan, Ecogam in, in particular from China, Austria, Italy, Whirlpool, uh, United States again, and many others. 16 countries of the world are present on our site. And this is the best evidence of the fact that Lipetsk region and special economic zones in the region are very effi efficient. We have a lot of investment, and over the whole period of this special e economic zone, it's 10 years, not a single investor left. We see an uh, uh, expansion on the <coughs> second stage, third stage of projects, etc. Lipetsk region, historically, has a competence in metallurgy and everything associated with iron and steel, machine building in particular. Now, when we uh, consider the possibility of, of creating that innovative cluster, we combined more than 80 companies into 
this uh, machine building very cluster. And these are the competences we're strong in. We have Lipinsk State Technical uh, University in Lipinsk, a number of engineering centers in the region. We have uh, personnel. We have uh, whole families with generations uh, working in the same industry. And we have competences in the heart of iron and steel and machine building. One example in the development of the cluster last year, on the 12th of December, we launched the first in post-Soviet times, the first factory to produce domestic a whole range of grinding uh, machine tools and equipment that was built in one year only. Uh, Two-thirds uh, of the funding came from the government, and uh, we appreciate the efforts of the Ministry of Industry and Trade and the Ministry of Economic Development uh, that uh, gave us the funds. Uh, this plant is going to uh, take care of 40% uh, of the national need for this type of equipment. In this chart, you see uh, several anchor projects for our cluster production uh, of uh, uh, various uh, steel structures. Uh, one company that we launched in 2016, another company uh, produces asynchronous electric motors. Uh, Lipetsk uh, machine tool uh, building company Intermash uh, is yet another company that uh, makes machine tools. There have been several other uh, companies that make uh, hydraulic equipment and uh, radio equipment. Uh, they are the anchors uh, that uh, produce uh, very uh, significant uh, products uh, for national industry. I said that we have a number of R&D centers, uh, special uh, training centers uh, for young talents. We have a number of universities uh, that uh, specialize in engineering. We uh, have a very good um, relations uh, between uh, production companies and uh, local universities. Uh, industrial companies uh, make contracts uh, with universities, and they train uh, the uh, students uh, to uh, have skills that would be relevant uh, to the biggest companies in the region. Uh, students are getting good language skills, and they can work internationally. Uh, a lot of uh, workers and uh, engineers in the industrial companies in the region are quite young. The average age uh, of engineers is uh, 28, uh, and uh, they have a fair language uh, skills. Uh, Horsch is uh, one uh, company out of Germany that uh, produces harvesters and tractors. Uh, they uh, have a production site. and. Uh, the uh, workers, uh, technicians, and engineers uh, come from local universities. Uh, universities have good German language uh, studies programs. Uh, they also send students uh, for uh, a period uh, of uh, international uh, training uh, to different parts of the world uh, to improve language skills of the graduates. Uh, we uh, believe that uh, we have good uh, human resources uh, potential, and uh, the uh, government uh, of the region uh, keeps a close eye on that. Uh, in the future, we plan to continue to focus on uh, machine uh, tools uh, production. We have uh, learned uh, the experience of uh, many industrial clusters in different parts of the world, uh, in Germany, in Japan, and Taiwan. Uh, we have good uh, contacts with them. And uh, the Ministry of Economic Development has been very helpful in uh, 
putting us in touch uh, with uh, those clusters. Uh, this gives us a much better perspective. This gives us much uh, better vision. We try to use uh, all the best international practices. We have a, a good management team. We uh, continuously uh, improve uh, the uh, cluster. And um, all of that um, is uh, done with the support of the regional administration. If anyone uh, in the audience is interested uh, in uh, doing something in uh, Lipetsk region, uh, please come to talk to me after this session. Thank you very much. And now I would like to pass the floor to Tatiana Zelenska, head of uh, Agency for Development of Krasnoyarsk region. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to start uh, by saying thank you to the uh, organizers for inviting me over to this uh, session. Uh, in 2016, we uh, had uh, a much smaller scale uh, cluster uh, that was limited uh, to a small number of industries. Today, uh, the cluster is much bigger. It covers all uh, the Krasnoyarsk region. Many more industries are involved uh, in the work of the cluster. 59 industrial companies uh, are a part of this arrangement. We have several companies uh, that uh, work in metals, in production of uh, various uh, natural materials. We have uh, companies that uh, produce uh, military hardware. We have companies that make various polymers. Uh, there are uh, companies in the city of Divnogorsk that uh, specialize in production of polymer materials. We are located in the center of Russia, and uh, we would like to raise uh, our attractiveness uh, to investors. We uh, uh, have um, several companies that uh, are subordinated uh, to Rosatom, the Russian uh, nuclear uh, ministry. Our uh, cluster is growing. Uh, we uh, add new industries and new companies. There are some things uh, in our cluster which uh, are quite uh, standard. We have uh, R&D organizations, uh, which is uh, quite usual. Uh, and uh, it is true for uh, most uh, other uh, innovation clusters. We know about the overall uh, big volume of investment uh, in uh, development clusters. We have a lot of core infrastructure, and we are willing uh, to offer services uh, to companies in different parts of the country. We have technology parks. We have uh, service companies. Uh, they are uh, equipped with all necessary licenses uh, and uh, permissions. Uh, we have a large uh, engineering center uh, that uh, we've been uh, creating for a number of years. We have a center for nanotechnologies. Uh, it uh, has been launched uh, two years ago. We have uh, several uh, joint uh, projects uh, where there are several uh, companies participating uh, in a bigger project. Uh, let me tell you what makes uh, our cluster attractive. Uh, we have very good human resources. Uh, 
Divnogorsk, Zhelezhnogorsk, and Krasnoyarsk uh, have uh, very high-quality human resources. Uh, we have been expecting a status uh, of uh, territory of advanced uh, development uh, to be awarded uh, to our territory. We still wait for that uh, to happen. Zhelezhnogorsk uh, has a very attractive uh, location and uh, a very good infrastructure. We are uh, building what we call an aluminum valley uh, together with Rosal. Uh, that is one of the major uh, aluminum producers uh, in the country. Uh, there are several uh, companies that act as anchors uh, for our cluster. There is one very uh, large uh, satellite uh, manufacturer. Uh, they do a lot of R&D work, and uh, they cooperate with uh, other uh, space technology companies in the country, and they have very uh, good uh, working relations with a number of universities and R&D organizations. Uh, they uh, build uh, communication satellites, uh, and uh, they also uh, have uh, quite a lot of experience uh, in navigation technologies uh, and uh, ground support systems. Uh, our clusters uh, do uh, quite a lot in developing uh, drone uh, technologies. Uh, this is a very promising area. Uh, several companies produce uh, drones. Um, our region is very large, and uh, <coughs> uh, drones are essential. Uh, they are used to uh, monitor the territory. They are used to uh, support uh, mail services. Uh, this is uh, an extremely important priority for us. Uh, we have uh, a number of success stories. Uh, we uh, have uh, one gentleman here uh, who uh, is uh, a CEO of a big industrial company in our cluster. Um, oh, there you are. Uh, please join us here. Uh, they have several uh, important technologies, uh, special welding technologies. Uh, you can ask this uh, gentleman uh, various questions uh, if uh, this is relevant uh, to you. We um, have a very good uh, R&D projects. We have uh, Uh, several uh, technology uh, development uh, organizations. Uh, three uh, companies uh, from our cluster uh, have uh, presentations uh, on their work. Uh, we have a company uh, that has the uh, latest technology of ammonia uh, production. Uh, we uh, have uh, a lot of uh, space uh, industry companies. Uh, these companies uh, are a part of a huge uh, network. Uh, they uh, do not uh, work by themselves. Uh, uh, they uh, have uh, huge cooperation uh, with uh, other producers uh, of uh, space hardware. Uh, we believe that uh, we can do a lot together uh, with people from other clusters. We have 12 of them out there. Uh, we think this would work very well. So that uh, is essentially what I wanted uh, to bring to your attention. We are now um, in transition uh, to a new system of uh, governance. We are now using project management uh, approach uh, much more extensively than ever before. <clears throat> we uh, believe that this would make us more effective. Uh, we want uh, to uh, be uh, 
well financed uh, from different uh, sources. Uh, we participate uh, in the uh, federal government uh, projects. Uh, we work hand in hand uh, with the uh, federal uh, ministries. Uh, we are willing to uh, give uh, extensive information on what uh, we do and on what we have. Uh, you uh, are running out of time, ma'am. We are uh, willing uh, to uh, offer our infrastructure uh, to investors uh, from all over. Uh, we have very good infrastructure uh, that is there, uh, that is ready uh, to be put in operation. Now, I'm passing the floor uh, to the representative of Kaluga region. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you a few words about uh, the uh, biotechnology and biomedicine uh, cluster in Kaluga region. Uh, the key mission uh, for our cluster is to offer most comfortable conditions uh, to businesses. We can do that uh, through government support at different levels. Uh, we set very ambitious tasks. By 2020, uh, we should have uh, uh, about 10 percent of market share of the Russian pharmaceutical markets. We want uh, to have a top three of the big pharma. By 2025, uh, we uh, want uh, to raise uh, the uh, share uh, of the medicines uh, produced in the country. Uh, to 20 percent. Uh, the key benefits uh, that we have uh, in the region are uh, fairly similar uh, to uh, what other colleagues have talked about. Uh, we've been around for a long time. Uh, we have unique uh, geography. Uh, we are close uh, to the uh, Moscow uh, region. Uh, we have very good uh, transport infrastructure, and uh, that is a big benefit. Uh, we uh, uh, have uh, a science city of Obninsk in the north uh, of the region. Uh, uh, that uh, city also uh, has uh, one of the largest logistics uh, hubs uh, in Russia. This is a really unique uh, project. It is a part of the new One Belt, One Road uh, project. Uh, it is uh, close uh, to the pharmaceutical uh, sites uh, that we have. Uh, the cluster has many residents uh, that uh, specialize in pharmaceutical industry. We uh, have built a lot of uh, specialized uh, infrastructure. We have uh, companies that make packaging. Uh, we have uh, companies that uh, process uh, waste of pharmaceutical uh, industry. Uh, we have equipment manufacturers. We also have uh, two very large uh, universities. Uh, one a university that uh, trains uh, students uh, in uh, pharmaceutical uh, industry. Uh, we have uh, a lot uh, of uh, automotive uh, industry. Uh, we have a very uh, good contacts uh, between universities uh, and uh, the uh, uh, pharma companies. Uh, one. A uh, thing uh, that I can say is that uh, all those pharmaceutical companies are new. Uh, ten years ago, we did not have any in the region. Now, uh, there are uh, over 63 uh, cluster participants. In 2016, uh, they have produced 28 billion rubles worth of uh, medicines. And uh, almost uh, 20,000 jobs have been created. Uh, the uh, main uh, areas of specialization uh, in the cluster is uh, radiopharmaceuticals. 
uh, nuclear medicine, pharmaceuticals. We have unique knowledge uh, skills uh, in the area. Uh, in the city of Obninsk, we have a great R&D center. Uh, we have um, large uh, companies uh, that uh, benefit uh, from the uh, R&D uh, organizations and their research. Uh, we uh, have very uh, strong ambitions that uh, we hope uh, to turn into reality with support of the federal agency. Uh, we have joined uh, the uh, digital economy uh, project. Uh, we are going to launch uh, a lot of new uh, projects. We are uh, finalizing the construction of a business incubator. That is another project supported uh, by the Ministry of Economic Development. Uh, it will focus on biomedicine and uh, pharma. The governor of the region uh, keeps a close eye uh, on development uh, of the cluster and uh, gives us uh, full support. Uh, we uh, have a general director of the cluster um, in this uh, building today. Uh, we uh, have uh, received a very uh, much uh, appreciation um, and uh, we have received a very high recognition uh, in uh, many parts of the world. We do uh, a lot internationally. Uh, we uh, travel a lot internationally. Uh, we have uh, signed uh, agreements uh, with uh, colleagues in uh, France and Germany. Uh, we are a part of the uh, European uh, cluster uh, platform. Uh, we uh, have a partnership with the Finnish uh, innovation cluster. We signed uh, uh, a cooperation agreement uh, with uh, an Italian uh, development uh, cluster. Uh, we continuously increase uh, our uh, international cooperation. Uh, like I said, uh, we uh, expand and develop very quickly. We work as one team and uh, all key players of the team are here. Uh, we uh, very much appreciate the efforts uh, of the Association uh, of Innovative Regions of Russia. Thank you very much for what you're doing. Uh, thank you for uh, timeliness. Now I'm passing the floor uh, to Alexandra Sachenko from Tomsk uh, region. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to uh, talk about our uh, innovations uh, cluster. But uh, I would like to start by telling you about the Tomsk region. Uh, we have about one million uh, residents, um, average temperature in January is minus 14, uh, although today uh, we have minus 40. Uh, so it's really cold uh, in our region today. We have about 80,000 university students. Uh, average uh, age is 38 uh, years. Uh, one uh, of the key benefits of our region is uh, that human capital, uh, human resources uh, that are essential uh, for innovations. A smart Technologies uh, cluster has been uh, set up in 2016, and it is uh, one of the leaders. We have 182 tenants. Uh, they are very different companies of different size and scale. Uh, these companies have uh, created 119 uh, products and services that are exported to 160 countries. Um, 
the products are very uh, different. Uh, they produce uh, software. Uh, they produce uh, communication systems. Uh, for example, uh, comm systems developed uh, in our cluster are used by Facebook. Uh, there is one company that uh, uh, develops payment systems. Uh, one uh, company that is a part of the cluster uh, produces uh, broadcasting uh, services, uh, and uh, it uh, is an official uh, broadcasting organization uh, for the World Cup. It has the uh, lowest uh, latency, uh, which is essential uh, for big uh, matches. Uh, we uh, have uh, a lot of knowledge uh, concentrated in our uh, smart technologies uh, cluster. Uh, we work uh, within the National Technology Initiative, uh, and we are focused uh, on development of markets of the future. Uh, after 2017, uh, two uh, of the uh, cluster tenants uh, have uh, been given the status of national champions. Uh, the improvements uh, that we are seeing are very strong. Uh, we uh, see a very solid growth. Now, uh, we have uh, six project uh, alliances. Uh, they are knowledge centers uh, in uh, different uh, domains. Uh, here they are in front of you. Uh, we have uh, one center for Arctic studies, uh, one for uh, medicine and pharma, industrial robotics, uh, technical vision, digital health, and smart city. In every one of those groups, uh, we have uh, 10 to 20 companies uh, or organizations. Uh, every group uh, has uh, R&D organizations and universities on board. Uh, they uh, have a continuous uh, communication and cooperation between uh, those organizations. Uh, projects are very, very different. Uh, in the Arctic group, uh, they uh, develop uh, remote control systems uh, for natural resources production, uh, for uh, harsh climate uh, venues, uh, digital health. Uh, offers uh, various uh, pieces of equipment, uh, various gadgets uh, for uh, healthcare systems, uh, technical vision. Uh, well, uh, they are developing a driverless uh, vehicle, a smart city. Uh, that uh, group uh, is uh, developing uh, several uh, solutions uh, that are tested uh, in the city of Tomsk. Uh, the project is uh, receiving support from the city government. Uh, we uh, have uh, seen a number of very interesting uh, pilot projects uh, under that initiatives. Uh, they um, have received uh, external support as well uh, from companies and organizations uh, located in other parts of the country. Uh, we uh, have many things to offer. Uh, we are uh, offering cooperation uh, with uh, the uh, current technology groups. Uh, we uh, would like to uh, invite uh, potential uh, participants and uh, operators uh, we uh, would like uh, to add a new blood uh, to uh, the cluster. We uh, are uh, prepared to uh, take uh, research and development uh, orders uh, from uh, various organizations. Uh, we are uh, prepared uh, to um, offer the services uh, associated with testing of new technologies uh, using uh, the uh, so-called living lab uh, model. 
we uh, essentially welcome everyone uh, who is interested. Thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, Dmitry Gorbunov uh, from Samara region. Thank you. I'm going to uh, tell you about uh, the aerospace cluster uh, that we have in Samara region. It has been uh, set up in 2012. Uh, since then, uh, we have grown uh, by a factor of three. Uh, today, uh, we have 68 uh, residents. Uh, the annual revenue amounts uh, to uh, Uh, 69 uh, billion rubles. Uh, Russian market uh, has uh, been fairly narrow in the space industry, so we were looking uh, to reach out uh, to international uh, markets. Uh, that was one of the main priorities. We also were uh, looking for international pa uh, partners. Uh, we have been uh, able to uh, increase our exports, and uh, now the amount to uh, 53 uh, million uh, US dollars. Uh, the benefits that we have to offer uh, may be um, not uh, so unique. Everybody uh, is unique in their own way, uh, and everybody says that. And uh, uh, we say this for a reason. Uh, we all uh, have uh, unique uh, uh, territories and geographic locations. We have uh, international airports. We have the Volga River, uh, uh, plus the area is uh, extremely beautiful. Uh, come visit us, and you will see uh, that uh, I'm not pulling your leg. Uh, we have a very good uh, logistics centers. Uh, we have several uh, technology parks. Uh, we have been visited uh, by our colleagues uh, from ABB, and they have somewhat uh, puzzled us. Uh, we uh, have not uh, been expecting uh, some uh, things uh, that uh, they uh, talked about. Uh, we uh, did not realize that uh, travel time uh, from uh, the uh, technology cluster uh, to the uh, nearest uh, international airport would matter for them, and it does. Uh, we are uh, now uh, uh, trying to uh, develop uh, a, a new uh, facility near uh, an international airport, uh, which uh, would uh, be a uh, very instrumental uh, to many international experts. We have uh, a Korolev University. We have Korolev University, Antalyat and Samara. Three universities won uh, grant uh, uh, financing the universities as centers of innovation. The whole strategy of social economic development of the region is based on the cluster cluster principle, all is built on the clusters. Aerospace cluster is the priority one. Within the economic strategy of Samara region, there is a special strategy for aerospace uh, cluster. And the Minister of Economic Development um, uh, of the Russian Federation helps us. We established more than 11 centers and laboratories in priority areas while, uh, for technologies used by our anchor producers and the research center named after Korolev. In long term, we see the development of those laboratories into full-fledged technological centers, which would be based on the Gagarin Center Technopolis. The um, this, uh, project of Technopolis Gagarin Center is the heritage of the World Cup uh, football. This great new infrastructure will be used to host uh, research and engineering companies, facilities, uh, branches of big companies to create a new environment new living and working uh, environment, the most favorable environment for the creative people who would work there. And thanks to ABB 
And thank you, colleagues. We have Aerotropolis, who is going to be with your help in a similar site where we'll have exhibition area, negotiation of offices to minimize the time for the transportation of engineers and people who would present their projects. The team of the cluster. We. Well, it, the Vice Government and Minister of the Economic Development of the region is in charge of the whole program. Mr. Kobenko is his name. In expert opinion of the European Secretary, Secretary of Cluster Analysis, the project team was um, recognized for the management system, high involvement in, in the um, adoption of strategic decisions and professionalism and efficient interaction with the authorities. Well, the authorities are within the cluster, so of course the cooperation is good. One of the recent achievements is the um, uh, um, prize uh, for the development of Russian-German cluster initiative. And there's one important point here. Recently, there was a contest of the Minister of Education and Science where universities were given uh, a status of the centers of innovation. And while the same, uh, well, the, the Korolev University participated in that contest and is not part of the list. We want the university to grow to a level where they would be deeply integrated into the industry and will act as management company. When the authorities manage the cluster, it's not that efficient. In our cases, the management consists is an engineering center within the clusters, but they don't have competences enough to cover all future development areas. If we succeed and the transformation program is successful, then in the near future we would offer to the Ministry of Education and Science one of the options of a university managing the cluster as a project. Cooperation proposals. Uh, it's uh, an, an important part of our uh, operation partner agreements, uh, uh, 15 to 17, the number of agreements increased two times. The Hungarian Aerospace Congress, Magnus Aircraft, uh, uh, drones uh, technology agreements, and agreement with West Kazakhstan. We are active uh, on the international markets, and the Ministry of Economic Development helps us with that. Thank you. Thank you, Lev Reshetnikov, Deputy Minister of Economic Development of Lenin-Ulyanovsk uh, region. I'll be very brief. What's been said here, that time in transit, this is not a factor that is a limiting factor. It's something that, uh, that has to be used as a criterion in making our calculations of expenses. When we compare ourselves again to China, India, Brazil, we, the comparison is based on money, on uh, expenses. So everything has to be in, included in the computation. And I suggest to the ministry, maybe uh, create an online calculator so that potential investors can go into that online tool to check on the expenses, HR costs, transportation costs, etc. At least uh, a rough estimate of what the expenses should be, whether uh, uh, human resources are available, the logistics situation, etc., etc. We can help you with that. And I'm sure very many companies would be interested and would support this process. Sorry for in, in, in intervening here. Well, the regions themselves can do that in their portals to do those calculations. Well, the region would always say that they are the best, but we need an objective mechanism to enable the companies to make a, a comparison of what the expenses would be before they start the visits. Okay, Lev Reshetnikov. Good uh, afternoon, dear participants. The Siberian Nauka policy is 250 companies in IT, industrial and um, biotechnologies, biopharma, specialized medical services and equipment. These are commercial companies, these are research companies, these are educational establishments. In terms of competitive advantage of the region, Novosibirsk region, Estasir, 
and thank you uh, economic development ministry for supporting us this we have a, a system of subsidies and tax benefits every year investors get uh, um, um, benefits in about worth a, a billion rubles for high technology business of course the main competitive advantage is the innovative production infrastructure academic park is the core of, of that infrastructure one of the best system uh, of uh, uh, facilities with innovation infrastructure biotechno park in koltsova is an industrial park 20 hectares would be completed this year with all the residents in, in place um, Medical Technopark. It's a system of innovation facilities in high-tech uh, medical equipment. And 16, uh, we opened uh, uh, Medprom um, Park with industrial companies there. That's the first stage of the project. And um, there are three uh, stages where uh, we would expand this facility. Today, with Swiss companies, there was a delegation of, from Switzerland last year. They were very, very interested in this particular medical uh, manufacturing park. Now, Sibirsk region is a major um, educational and innovation center, the creation of the Siberian branch of the Academy of Sciences. We have 34 uh, higher education establishments with the average price um, uh, uh, wages, uh, then the same as in Russia. We have high, um, highly uh, trained personnel. Uh, the core is Novosibirsk uh, State University. They have their own innovative laboratories, um, collaboration centers, and uh, uh, serious competences, international level. And they research into promising uh, areas, new areas. We are uh, um, in cooperation with Pfizer, Inter, Bayer, and we do research together with uh, leading world universities. Um, well, case studies uh, in medical equipment, individual implants project, which is quite successful. There is bioceramics project for medicine with endoprosthesis, uh, ceramic based and 15 hospitals of Russia already using this technology. Biotech, agricultural industry, also important, promising business. Uh, this one increased almost two times uh, every year in terms of revenue. We've retained these competences in Novosibirsk. Not available much in Russia. As for proposals for investment, as ceramics uh, industrial facility, for high-tech industries, the investors from Switzerland and the beer in negotiation on implementing the project. There's a project uh, to treat um, cancer disease, um, logical processes, build those, nuclear uh, uh, clock uh, for 15 billion of years, this atomic clock will um, not uh, miss a second. And that can change in oil and gas industry, in construction industry, applications there. Quantum computers, another project, microvita project, in high technology, in production for microvitamins, uh, for fodder, uh, cattle fodder. Uh, uh, that was a recent fire, um, huge manufacturing facilities went down. Uh, it's of course bad, but that opens up opportunities for us in that further um, production industry. There are proposals on how to go internationally with our products, and we're more active right now with, in particular, Chinese Center for the Transfer of Technology to reach the Chinese market. Now, our plans for the development of the cluster. First, Novosibirsk region is a pilot region to implement a regional export standard. 100 million rubles have been allocated for the purpose. That would go to promote um, the products of our cluster in the Russian and international markets. We want to establish a venture fund. There is a program to attract investment from international investors. We have a pro pro project to, um, to improve the HR situation for seven years. And we plan to have a, a separate session for digital economy. Autumn. For that cluster, we had a similar thing that the higher economic school in Moscow does. We had a session. Uh, our objective was well, like the team of the cluster, 
we have a uh, regional institutes of the development and we all got together during that session to focus on how to promote the products from the Krata. And um, spring of this year, we plan to hold a strategic session on the digital economy. And finally, I would like to ask the investors to give us an opportunity. Well, uh, uh, consider us as a, a potential partner, please. Uh, I'm sure uh, the cooperation would be mutually beneficial. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, we've done with the presentations from the region. We have only several minutes to go. Uh, pre um, the presenters from the regions, if there are any questions uh, or the Association of European Business, if we have questions from them as well, this is an opportunity to do, the, to do that. And after that, uh, I would like to also to share your comments, identify the weak points, uh, strong points of those regions. So, no questions, please. A few questions, please. May the question is from no, to Samara region, a space cluster. I am representative. I'm from Fokker, the Dutch manufacturer. Uh, we are uh, competing against um, Airbus and Boeing, and they visited. Despite sanctions, they were. Um, prepared to co-invest in Russia for care. Unfortunately, the Department of Aviation Company did not find it feasible to participate together with Fokker. It was very easy. The Dutch were ready to manufacture in Russia, share their technology, etc. But initial investment, they would want to invest but they would require a return investment. They were ready to share technology, etc., to, to produce, to supply you know, um, um, aircraft for uh, French market and Dutch market. The uh, tentative size of the, of the investment is five billion dollars, half from uh, Holland, half from Russia. As a state secretary present here from the Ministry of Economic Development, my question is: Are you ready to finance the project? Yes, I, it's well. We're ready to go, and uh, there was a visit. Uh, we have, were in negotiation with the Ministry of Industry and Development. Well, the objective for us here, this is, is to, to to train our regions of how to interact with international business. Considering the presentation, uh, international business. Are there any questions to for this particular area? Now, investment opportunities. To Michael Akimi and Lawrence Widman. Well, considering well, I may uh, speak. I think I may speak on behalf of all the clusters. This level of investor. This is a personal, personal, individual discussion. Tax benefits, personnel. Um, um, allocation of a site. This is personal negotiation. Just visit us if we want. You want to go to our region. Uh, one more question only. Very little time. To a foreign business, any question from the regions to foreign businesses? How to best present your region? Uh, well, well, secrets we don't know. My question was to Mikhail. Uh, methodology. Can you share your methodology of how do you evaluate the regions? Well, this is not a question, a request, right? Let's uh, do it like this. The role of Ministry of Economic Development should be precisely this, to make this a system. We're ready to share, of course. We spent money, of course, uh, effort uh, to develop that methodology. We're ready to share that for as much as it is needed. But somebody should be uh, in charge from the center. If the Ministry of Economic Development is ready to take this role, we will share that information. May I uh, respond to this? Of course, we can do that, but that's a dangerous thing. An automated online calculator 
there to would select uh, the be three best regions for all investors. It's well, every investor, every company has their own set of priorities, and the weights of those priorities could be different. So we cannot create a single calculator, one fits for all. Some um, people are more interested in transport infrastructure, some in IT, some HR engineers. Be some uh, would need uh, software developers. Uh, one calculator would not do. Most likely, it would not help. Then it would help. Uh, we don't think that um, uh, it, it would uh, be good uh, as uh, a tool. We can think about a, a bigger uh, system. We can discuss it with foreign investors, uh, what they should be interested like a matrix of sorts, so that um, that can be used by the regions. But a single calculator, believe me, my immediate response would be that it would be counterproductive rather than productive if we, we do this. Uh, I absolutely agree with your position that it's very a specific uh, matter specific for each segment and specific to uh, each functionality. If it's an engineering center, it's one thing. If it's in a research center, it's another thing. If it's production, it's a different thing. Is it a raw material processing or a higher level um, um, processing? Well, uh, that would be, make it different. But that's what I had in mind. It's not a simple calculator. It's like a complex model. The more complex the model is, the easier to manipulate it. Uh, that's first, and we cannot uh, create uh, 1,500 scenarios for each company, for each segment of the market. And the countries have their own specificities, like uh, investors from uh, Switzerland would monitor long-term investors. Investors from China may have in different interests. So we can never create uh, this as a quality product. So I believe we should take a softer approach there, not that harsh an approach. We have very little time to go. Mikhail Lawrence, just one advice, please. In a few days, and the state Duma will have an expert cluster on um, clusters uh, gathering for the first time. My question is to Mr. Rudnik. We're talking about innovative uh, clusters here, but how many clusters all in all? In the Russian cluster observatory, there are more than 100 clusters, 27 clusters of the first wave, industrial clusters, very many already. The ministries, the individual ones, uh, create their own clusters. Well, Mikhail and Lawrence, please, one advice from each of you. Uh, your impressions and one advice from each of you. What should be the focus of the regions? 20 seconds, please. Let me start. I think that the key thing is understanding the interests of potential investors. What Alek Famichov talked about, you need to better understand, investors need to understand what they can do in your region. And another thing, uh, can be applicable to research. It is access to components and chemicals. This is an important matter. And actually, Mr. Greff spoke about that yesterday. It's a very big thing. I have two points. First is focus on the strong, uh, strengths, uh, unique features of your region. Now, that was what you did, actually, in your presentations. And second, not only focusing on big projects, which uh, have big names, but also smaller ones and smaller players that could gradually grow into bigger ones uh, and a more of a gradual approach. Investors may want to start with a smaller project to um, feel uh, how business going so on, then, then they would be ready to go into bigger things. Just a few uh, uh, f uh, final words from the ministry. Uh, well, what uh, can the ministry do to help your clusters? First, uh, the uh, law on technological values 
uh, has been adopted that would address the issue of reducing the uh, salary expenses. Uh, school co residents of the, 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 the pay 14% uh, pension contributions, uh, unlike other uh, places where they pay 20%. There is a resolution of the government regulating um, the standards, uh, the criteria to qualify as technological values. We are in charge in the ministry to um, uh, consider the applications if you want to qualify for the status. And please uh, come up with your application second and interaction with our big companies. They have their own um, innovative development plans, uh, including items of cooperation with clusters. So if you're interested in cooperating with big Russian companies, we can help you find those who can be ready to uh, cooperate. And a third thing, consider how to invigorate the innovative activity in, in your region. Build your innovative solutions into uh, real uh, life. Uh, there's a law on procurement, uh, state procurement. Consider the um, provisions of those law, what they can offer to your regions in terms of innovative uh, products, um, uh, the criteria on how to do certifications, testing, etc., etc. And second, trend. Slation, our um, programs of national champions, quick growing leaders, uh, uh, their revenues from uh, 400 million rubles at the regional level, the barrier could be marked much lower 40 million or 20 million. If you see a company with quick growth rates um, um, consistently over uh, several years, these are the companies that can act as drivers for economic growth in your region where, where you can rely on the development of the clusters. There's Irkutsk region already has this program, regional champion. And there are some other regions considering this. We can help them, you with that program on a regional basis. After the coffee break in the big hall on fifth floor, there would be actually a presentation of this program, national champions. Uh, and they will tell you about how the program uh, is evolving and could be interesting to the region. Thank you, Oleg Farnipchov. I'll be brief. Thank you for all participants in this discussion. Although uh, we didn't have a clash of opinion, and that was um, basically presentations and questions and answers. Sorry it was not that interactive with the audience. But success to you all, and focus maybe on one more area, which has not been touched upon today, maybe sometimes underestimated as we work uh, in this innovative development area. There is a lot of movement in uh, supporting small business right now. We have special corporation dedicated to small business. Uh, since January of this year, we have a new program, which is called seven, Six and a Half. This is real. 6.5% of the loan interest, interest on loans for some companies who qualify. We have a number of other tools and the regional uh, programs to support uh, small and medium companies. but. What we do in supporting the small business they, and what we do in the innovative development and clusters, they are quite of separate. They should go together. Out of all uh, the range of tools that we have, the centers of cluster development are uh, more or less contact connected, and the engineering centers that are built there are more or less connected. But the tools are m many more. And uh, growing a small and medium innovative company can be done not only within our traditional institutes of development, like the Fund for um, uh, Promotion of uh, Innovative Companies, but also using uh, the uh, um, um, more favorable uh, credit terms now that are available. Uh, the uh, new startups, uh, small in, in, uh, innovative business companies, uh, of course, that would help them. Otherwise, thank you. Thank you. Let's move forward.